We are here at Camp Borden, the birthplace of the Royal Canadian Air Force. In fact, it was 75 years ago the RCAF was born. Today, we celebrate that milestone. And among those on hand for this special day is Flight Lieutenant Retired Glenn Rawson of Hanover, Ontario. Glenn, you are certainly an important part of the history here at Camp Borden. Well, I was fortunate enough to be one of the trainees under the first course of the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan which was uh, started at the beginning of the war. I graduated as a pilot, got my wings on a wings parade at Camp Borden in, in September 1940 with the very first course. And I'm very, I feel very honored and pleased to be back just with this celebration uh, because both uh, the memory of getting my wings at Camp Borden and also the, uh, the fact that I was able to serve in the RCAF, come out the way I am, healthy, etc. And uh, I just feel very, very honored to be here for today. Now I know you started this day off with a very memorable flight. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, and uh, I have not, uh, I was in the peacetime Air Force after the war, but, and flew Harvards for a while, and then went on to other aircraft, and I have not flown a Harvard or flown even in one, since uh, 1954, I believe, is the last date. I'd have to check my logbook for accuracy. But anyway, and um, I was able to get up in the harbor today. I was able to fly it, and um, it felt quite comfortable in it, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. I didn't take it off and land it, but I, I did fly it in the air. <laughs> Tell me, what are some of your more memorable memories from CFB Borden and your days uh, serving in the Air Force? Well, I think one of the, the, the most memorable thing is that uh, we are, I arrived at Camp Borden back in the spring of, I think it was in May of 1940, to start my training. And I was uh, a young fella from a small town out west. Uh, it was a complete strange situation, a strange atmosphere. Everything was strange to me. And um, the airport was... Uh, a chamozzle at that time. It was under construction. The runways were incomplete, and uh, and so on. And and the uh, instructors were wonderful people, but they all were very safety conscious because the Air Force was short of aircraft, and we had to be very careful. If we run off the en end of the runway, we were stuck in the sand. And it was. Uh, the, I think that's part of the, the real memory of the place. And, uh, and then the, the most memorable thing of all, of course, was the fact that I graduated. And, <clears throat> and then we had the wings parade right out here by the hangars. And I stood up and had the, my wings pinned on me, which was something that I uh, will never forget. It was, uh, it was something that I looked forward to, I worked for and wanted. And, and uh, it was, I was a very proud person to have those wings pinned on me. Where did your RCAF career take you uh, after Borden? Well, I, I, the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan, which is, you know, is the, the largest air training plan I think that was ever invented. <laughs> uh, and they, it, it was, when I was being on the first course, it was at the beginning, they were opening service flying training schools all across the country, and they took our whole course and put us in the course at Trenton to be flying instructors and we went out to the various stations and I, I went from here to Calgary, Alberta at number three SFTS and served there as a flying instructor. Um, then our graduates were from all over the Commonwealth. I had Australian students, New Zealand students and American students and so on and, uh, and British, all kinds of Royal Air Force people and, um, and got to meet a lot of people like that of course from the other countries and then they were going back over to fight the war and one of the sore points that we had was that uh, we flying instructors were stuck in Canada and they wouldn't let us go and uh, we tried many times and I wrote, even wrote letters about it trying to get a chance to go overseas and was always turned down said I was an experienced instructor and therefore we need you. <laughs> but think about all the men that you trained that, that did go on to represent Canada and the Commonwealth. Yes, and, uh, and I'm very proud of some of them I heard afterwards that, that uh, were, were decorated for their, for their uh, bravery or whatever in, in, uh, in combat and so on. And, and, and it was just it was a, 
a very proud feeling too, even that much you know, I was proud of. But I still felt that uh, it was a good war and I missed it, you know, because, about going over there. But uh, there's nothing I could do about it. There must be a few stories, and maybe one or two in particular, that uh, as a teacher, as an instructor, uh, in the air with a, a young student, uh, there may have been a few moments rather exciting or unforgettable moments. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> I could go on and on because you, could, you couldn't be a flying instructor in a machine like a Harvard for the years that I was without having some experiences. <laughs> uh, that was that just goes with the territory and then one particular one that stands out and I will never forget it was I was uh, teaching this lad to do spins and in the spin you stall the airplane flick it flicks over and it goes spins towards the ground and uh, we got into the spin and uh, all of a sudden I said okay recover and he nothing happened so I got a little more anxious and said recover and I did repeated that several times. He still didn't do anything about it. So I felt the controls and he was frozen solid on the controls in the front cockpit. And fortunately I'm very thin and I was able to ease myself back as far as possible and jam the, the control column or the, the stick from the back seat and freed it and recovered the airplane and I recovered at 1500 and I'd gone from 10,000. 10,000 feet to 1500 uh, and finally recovered it. Uh, did you do the landing as well? You got that right too. <laughs> I didn't let him have those controls anymore and when I reported it in the uh, afterwards to the squadron commander of course they discontinued his training because they found that his he was not the nervous you know he's a nervous type and was not suitable for it and probably saved his life too you see in so doing it's a special day here at Borden and many memories where it, it's got to be an emotional day as well Ab absolutely it's just it's just been fabulous and I I, I so much appreciate it uh, there's one other thing that I, I, I would like to say too, and I, I t is that is that I <clears throat> did a lot of flying in the Air Force, as I say, almost 10,000 hours, a lot of it in peacetime. I did search and rescue in the north and all over the Arctic and Baffin Island and so on. And I had a wife who always supported me and never, ever questioned anything I was doing and I know she was anxious when she was at home, but uh, she certainly never let me know that. And, and we had it, uh, I had absolutely full support and no problems in that area. Very well said. I've met your wife and you're a lucky man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she was a great girl. Flight Lieutenant Glenn Rawson, thank you very much. You're, you're very welcome.